First I grabbed one of the towels I wanted to use and measured its dimensions. Then I fired up Fusion 360 and modeled the towels. Then it began modeling all the main components including the miter joints. It's nice to model the miter joints because it helps you figure out which direction they need to go. When I'm done modeling all the components I can easily measure them all to create a cut list. And finally I added some nice counterboard holes to attach it to the wall. So once I determined how much material I needed for my project, it came out to the garage and I grabbed this piece of walnut I had on the shelf. Now I need to take it over to the table saw and rip it down into strips that are as wide as the piece is thick. My piece was about one and a half inches thick. Now I'm going to take my cut list, come over to my miter saw, and cut everything to rough length. I'm going to add about a quarter of an inch to each piece. Before I go any further, it seemed like a good time to fill any of these little knots and holes with a little black CA glue. If you use the accelerator with CA glue, it dries within seconds. All the CA glue is now dried, so I'm going to go ahead and sand off that CA glue to make it flat, and then run them through the table saw just to make sure I have a perfectly square profile. I rough mark my miter joints so I don't cut them in the wrong direction. When it came time to actually cut the miter joints, I just used my miter saw. Nothing fancy here. As you're cutting your miter joints, it's always a good idea to do a quick reality check and make sure you're cutting them in the right direction. The next step is going to get a little bit fancy. We're going to join all these pieces together. This is an optional step. You could just use brad nails and glue if you want. But I'm going to go with a case miter joint, which looks like this, using a piece of maple inlaid inside of that miter. I think it turned out pretty good for my first test piece. Um, it also helped me get the setup right. So let's do that now. First, I'm going to cut the spline out of this maple. I'm going to cut off about a quarter of an inch and then I'm going to make the actual cutout on the miter joint fit perfectly with whatever I end up with here. Now I'm going to get my table saw set up to cut perpendicular into the miter joint. I used a test piece to get the depth and location of the cut perfect. Once I was happy with it, I cut my first piece. After I was happy with that, I cut the rest of the pieces. To get the thickness of the slot correct, I had to actually make two passes. So I used this test piece to get it perfect. Once I was super happy with the way that the spline fit, I cut the rest of my pieces. It is assembly time, so the first thing I'm going to do is cut some splines out of this maple. I like to dry fit the spline first before applying glue to the joint. Be sure to get glue on all sides of the slot on both sides of the joint. Blue painter's tape is great to hold the joint tight while it dries. Once the glue is completely dry, I use a pole saw to cut the splines flush.
To fill in any imperfections, I rub in wood glue and sand. The sawdust creates a nice wood filler. I use this technique a lot because I tend to have a lot of imperfections. Here's a tip. When doing your assemblies, try to do as much sanding as possible before the final assembly. I have a little sub-assembly right here that requires a bit more sanding. This is a perfect time to do it before I add the long pieces. I knew I still would have to do some finished sanding on the fully assembled towel holder. So for now, I just sanded up to 120 grit sandpaper. You should always dry fit before gluing. This spline fit too tight, so I had to sand the sides of the slot a bit before gluing. I'm not showing it here, but be sure to check all of your glue ups to make sure they are square. For miter joints, I like to use painter's tape and a clamp. The painter's tape holds the outside tight and the clamp can be adjusted to put pressure where it's needed. After the splines were sanded down, I finished sanding one more time with 120 grit and then 220 grit. I used a Forstner bit to drill nice countersunk holes for the screws. Once the towel holder is installed, they will barely be noticeable. I finished with Mr. Cornwall's Super Duper Everlasting Oil. I worked the oil into the surface and then let it sit for 24 hours. Then I apply a second coat and wipe off any excess oil. Finally, I let it sit for another 24 hours before installation. Thank you for watching my entire video guys, I really appreciate it. If you'd like to support my channel even more, please like, comment, and subscribe, and check out one of these other videos over here.